Hi guys, welcome back for another video in our SAP Cloud Integration series. Today we will cover SAP S4HANA integration with external text calculation engines based on the official integration flow from SAP that SAP provides to us. However, there are still some important configuration steps required so that it actually works for you. If you follow along, you will be able to set it up with different text calculation engines. However, in this video, I will show it live to you how to set it up with my own text calculation engine that I've developed and that is Global Text as a Service. If you want to learn more about Global Text as a Service itself, please feel free to head over to my website blueantoinette.com or to my other text related website that is gt4m.com global text for marketplaces and more. Furthermore, it's important to say that this solution covers indirect text calculation like value added tax, US sales tax, goods and services tax and the like. From the technical perspective, if you haven't set up SAP Cloud integration yet, please watch my other video, setting up SAP Cloud integration in SAP BTP. Before we get into the details, if you're new on here, hey, I'm Robert, and if you like this content, please consider giving a like and subscribe so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. But now without further ado, let's get to it. All right, here I'm already in my SAP integration suite. In order to find the relevant integration flow, we click on discover here on the left side and then on integrations. And here in the search box, we type text calculation and enter. And here we find the official package from SAP, SAP S4HANA integration with external text calculation engines along with packages from other text providers. However, we will stick with the official one from SAP and therefore we click on the first one here. Then on the top right, we find the button copy here above my head and we click on it. Once the package is copied, we can click on design here on the left side in the menu and then on integrations and APIs. Here you now can see that we have this integration package available for our personal use and we click on it. Then we click on artifacts and on request text calculation for single external engine. Here you can see the integration flow that we need to configure to our needs, but also we need to adapt it a little bit. Before we do that, we need to create a security material that allows us to authenticate with the external text calculation service, that is global text as a service in our case. In order to create the security material, we click on monitor here on the left side, then integration and APIs. Here we scroll down and we find manage security and security material here. We click on it. Here you can see that I've already created a user that is GT4M test user. However, I will show to you how you can create your own security material here. You click on create here on the top right and then user credentials. Here we enter a name for the security material, for example, GT4M test user in our example. It says security with the same name already exists because I've created this one before, but okay. And here in the type field, you choose user credentials. And here in the fields user and password, you can enter the credentials that you can create on gt4m.com once you have subscribed to Global Text as a Service, either on the Puantonet or on the GCP Google Cloud Marketplace. Once you've created these credentials, you click on deploy here. Now we can click on integration and APIs and we click on the integration with external text calculation engines here again. And then we click on artifacts. Here we open this integration flow again. And now we click on configure here on the top right side. And we keep the sender as it is, but we click on the receiver tab here. And here in the address field, 
we enter the URL to our external text calculation service. In our case, this is Global Text as a service that runs on gt4m.com. We keep the proxy type internet and the method post, and we change the authentication from non to basic. And here in the credential name, we now can enter the security material, the name of the security material that we entered before, gt4m test user. And then we click on save here on the bottom right. Once it is saved, we also click on deploy. And here we choose confirm transaction handling configuration and then we click on deploy again. Here it says request text calculation for single external text engine is triggered for deployment. We click on OK here and it says it is successfully deployed. Next, we need to make sure that the JSON body that the sender, in our case SAP S4HANA, sends to the integration flow here gets forwarded here to our external text calculation engine. In order to do that, we need to edit this integration flow here by clicking on the edit button here in the bottom right. And this says if you edit the artifact, it will not receive any further updates. Would you like to proceed? We have to click on yes here because we have to change the integration flow. Now we need a little more space here. So we move the integration process box here a little bit to the right as well as the external text calculation engine here. And then we move the start of the iFlow a little bit to the left here. And then we click on the plus symbol here. And here we have to add a content modifier. Now we have to change this content modifier. I've made a separate video about this. So if you're interested in detail how to change the content modifier to post JSON bodies to external REST APIs, Please watch my video, SAP uh, CPI, iFlow, how to post JSON to external REST APIs. But basically, I give this content file a name, for example, at JSON request. Then in the exchange property tab, I create a field named request body, for example. This You can choose this one as you like. And of source type expression and the value comes from the field in.body and the data type is java.lang.string since this is a JSON string. Then you switch to the message body tab and here you change the type to expression as well. And in the field body you enter dollar curly brackets property dot request body curly brackets closed this request body basically is the name that you previously defined here. And then you can click on save here. It says the text calculation engine is saved. Next, we need to deploy this iFlow. We can do this by clicking on the deploy button here on the bottom right. We choose the profile, which is cloud integration in our case, and then we click yes. Here it says that the text calculation is triggered for deployment. We click on OK and it is successfully deployed. Now we can test our integration flow. And for this purpose, we go to the overview tab in our integration package. In the description, we find this text. The integration package is available for SAP S4HANA and S4HANA Cloud. And here below, we can find the link to the API we click on it. This leads us to the Business Accelerator Hub and we can log in here. Once we are logged in, we can click on text determination and calculation via integration flow. And here we can click on try out. Here you can click on the body field that shows you a JSON body that SAP S4HANA, respectively SAP S4HANA Cloud, sends to the iFlow. But before we can test this, we need to create an environment. This environment needs to contain the credentials that we created when we did the setup of the SAP integration runtime. 
If you're not sure how to create these credentials, please watch my video Setting up SAP Cloud Integration in SAP BTP. And then click on Add New Environment here and enter the credentials. I've already done that, so I just edit my environment so that I can show this to you. Basically, in the host field, you have to enter the URL from the service key of the process integration runtime. Then you scroll down to the authentication. As authentication type, you choose OAuth. 2.0 application flow and in the fields client ID and client secret you enter the corresponding fields from the service key of the process integration runtime. The field token URL is automatically built from these two fields host and subdomain. Therefore in the field host you just enter the substring of the token URL field in the service key that is between authentication and forward slash OAuth forward slash token. And in the field subdomain, you just enter the substring that is before the string authentication in the token URL of the service key. Once you've created your environment, you can click on run here and execute it. Execute this request with this body and you can see that you retrieve a response. So if we open the request here again, we can see a purchase here of an item that has the price 100 and that was shipped from Calgary in Canada to Winnipeg in Canada as well. Now if we look into the result, we can see the result country here and an applied tax rate of 5% that gives us a value of 5 Canadian dollars. So the deductible tax amount here is 5 Canadian dollars here. Additionally, to this tax rate of 5%, which is the goods and services tax, another tax rate of 7% has been applied. This is the PST tax rate in Manitoba and it is not deductible, therefore the deductible tax amount is 7 here. Now let's change the request a little bit and let's say the unit price is not 100 but 200 Canadian dollars. Now let's run the request again. Now you can see that the applied tax rate of the goods and services tax is 5% and the value now is 10 Canadian dollars. And the PST rate is 7% and the calculated value is 14 Canadian dollars now. So you can see that these results are calculated as expected. However, you need to know that these results do not come out of the box. You first need to create or configure the tax rules in Global Tax as a service. And these depend on the tax laws in your location and the products you sell or purchase. But I do not go into detail into this topic because this would be beyond of the scope of this video. Now finally, let's say a few words about the requirements on SAP S4HANA and SAP S4HANA Cloud. Well, basically you have to create a communication arrangement that uses the communication scenario SAP-COM0249, but I will not cover this in this video since I already made some videos about SAP communication arrangement and communication scenarios, so please check out my channel. And furthermore, in customer systems, the scope item 43D has to be activated. But that's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button and subscribe button and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.